In this video, we're gonna be talking about the chestnut mushroom, otherwise known as Foliota adiposa. We're gonna be talking about what it is, how it grows, why you'd wanna grow it in the first place, and we're also gonna cook it up, because again, what's the point of growing all these mushrooms if you don't at least get to enjoy them? So first of all, what is the chestnut mushroom? Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Latin name for the species is Foliota adiposa. Now, Foliota comes from the Greek word folis, which actually means scale, which makes a lot of sense because this mushroom, when you look at it, is very scaly, both on the cap and on the stem. Now, the second part of the name adiposa makes a little less sense to me because adiposa means like lard or greasy, and that would imply that it might be, you know, have a greasy or slimy cap, which it doesn't actually. It has just kind of a nice smooth cap with those rough scales on it. Now there is another species of foliota that is commonly cultivated known as foliota nameco which is just more commonly called just nameco and that species actually does have a really slimy cap but in my opinion foliota adiposa does not. It just has this rough cap and it's not slimy at all. But the scaly part does totally make sense especially when these mushrooms are young and when they're just forming pins they look like these tiny little bundles of joy that are just covered in scales and as they grow a lot of those scales remain on both the cap and the stem which is why it has a slightly shaggy appearance. They also have this characteristic kind of brown yellow color, which is why they get the name chestnut. Chestnut mushrooms are a wood-loving saprophytic species, so in nature you're gonna find them growing on stumps and on fallen logs. Now they don't grow here where I'm at, they do grow naturally in Europe, and although this species doesn't grow around me, there are other species of foliota that grow wild here. I just don't know exactly what species they are or the edibility, so I've never tried them. Now chestnut mushrooms are super easy to grow, and although it doesn't seem to be a super popular mushroom among small-scale mushroom cultivators or home mushrooms, from growers, I am starting to see it a lot more often, which makes sense because again, it is a super easy mushroom to grow and it just looks super cool. As mentioned, foliota are a wood loving species. So I've grown this particular batch on a mix of hardwood fuel pellets that has been amended with a little bit of bran. This is just the typical fruiting block recipe that I use. That's five cups of hardwood fuel pellets, about a cup and a quarter of bran and about 1.4 liters of water that's been sterilized for two and a half hours at 15 PSI. And it's working really well to grow these mushrooms. They colonize really fast so after inoculating the block with grain spawn it only took about 10 to 14 days before it was fully colonized and ready for fruiting. Now to fruit these mushrooms I have seen uh, growers do it where they just do a top fruiting which means they just cut off the top of the bag and the mushrooms grow right off the top of the block but what I found works really well is instead of doing that you just cut a big x right in the front of the bag and that kind of forces these giant clusters of uh, chestnut mushrooms to grow right through the front and form these big beautiful clusters of mushrooms. Now, as you can see, chestnut mushrooms don't grow singly. They do grow in these big clusters, which is really characteristic of it. And there's all sorts of different sizes of mushrooms inside the clusters. You know, there's little tiny ones that didn't grow all the way, but most of them do form into these large, beautiful mushrooms. And these ones are a little bit more stemmy than usual. And maybe that's just because they weren't getting enough fresh air as they were growing, but still they're a really good looking mushroom that is ready to harvest. Now, there's not a lot of information online for how to grow these mushrooms, but again, they're super straightforward to grow and there's nothing too special you need to know about cultivating chestnut mushrooms. Like most mushrooms, they like slightly cooler temperatures and really humid conditions, but these ones in particular were grown at around 70 degrees Fahrenheit or right around 21 degrees Celsius, so basically a room temperature, and they were grown around 90 to 95% relative humidity. With these conditions, it only took seven days from putting them in the fruiting chamber and seeing the first sign of pins for them being totally fully grown and ready to harvest. And in fact, I probably could have harvested these yesterday. They might be even a little bit too mature, uh, but still, this is a good time to harvest these mushrooms. So again, like most other mushrooms, you can quite easily get two or three flushes from the same block. So right after these are harvested, they can be put right back into fruiting conditions and we'll grow mushrooms again. So again, these things are ready for harvest. So let's go ahead and do just that. Now to harvest them, it's really nothing complicated. I'm just going to take a knife and cut the mushrooms off the block. They do have a reasonably good shelf life. So if you harvest them, you can easily put them in the fridge for a few days before you use them. As far as timing, again, you could harvest these a little bit earlier. I think I let these go a little bit too long and the younger they are, the more tender they're going to be. But still, this is no case time to harvest them so we're just going to pull these off the block to see how much uh, mushrooms we got off of them and then we're going to cook them up. We are going to make a chestnut mushroom sort of a stew in a red wine gravy. Ooh. So these clusters of mushrooms you can see there's like a little bit of substrate off because I just pulled it off the block. We'll have to cut that off. The further up the stem you go the less kind of chewy it's going to be so we probably only want to use maybe I don't know, three quarters of this or so. So we're going to serve this 
mushroom stew over top of mashed potatoes. So in here I have some chopped, peeled chopped potatoes. We're gonna boil those up with some mash. the chestnut mushroom is good for recipes that you're cooking for a long time like a stew as it will hold up with a nice meaty texture hold up its shape through the cooking process so we'll see we're gonna go ahead and add our carrots and mushrooms to the pan take your leftover wine measure it out So we're gonna add some rosemary, some thyme, a few crushed chili peppers for good measure, as well as our garlic. We're gonna fry this around until it's fragrant and then start adding our liquids. We're gonna start with adding our red wine. Here we have one cup. Feel free to use up to two cups, whatever you have. Also gonna add about a tablespoon to two of tomato paste. Deglaze that pan, put my tomatoes in. And then we're gonna add about two cups of broth. Here we have vegetable broth, feel free to use beef broth if you have it on hand. We're gonna let the wine reduce a little bit before we add our broth, but so far it is smelling good. Okay, now it has reduced a little bit, so we're gonna add our broth. Now we're ready to let this simmer for about one to two hours over medium, medium to high heat. We're gonna let all these flavors mingle. We're gonna let everything soften and just get really scrumptious. We'll be back in one to two hours to thicken this and serve it over our mashed potatoes. Ready to peek inside? That looks good. It reduced really nice, but we are gonna add just a little bit of thickness to thicken it up more to a gravy. But it looks and smells really good. All right, so you can see the thickness we've achieved here. It's really nice gravy. This looks just perfect. So here we have our final dish. It looks so good. It smells so good. So we're gonna serve it up over top of our mashed potatoes and enjoy. Okay, look at that, looks really good. The mushrooms kind of almost got lost in here, but I can see them, maybe you can't pick them out, but I wanna try just the mushrooms because, well, that's kind of what this video is about, and this looks amazing. Uh, let's give it a shot. This is very carrot heavy, a lot of carrots in there. Um, I think you did good on the carrots. But I like it, it's like a really hearty stew, you know, it's kind of cloudy outside, this is gonna be really nice. Okay, let's try just, let's try it. just a mushroom. Ooh, just a mushroom, all yeah. right. They held their shape really well. I know. They did shrink up a little bit, but overall they look really good. I have two here. I got one. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. So mm. the thing about chestnut mushrooms is they do maintain a little bit of that crunch, right? You mm. can feel it when you taste it. They do. It's crunchy. It's not chewy like an oyster mushroom might be. It's not, you know, soft like a button mushroom might be if you cooked it for two hours. It still kind of has that crunch. It's really, really nice. It's really nice, yeah. Such yeah. a good texture. And it, I mean, it's kind of hard to pick out the flavor of the mushroom because we have all these delicious sauces on it. But traditionally, chestnut mm. mushrooms are kind of like a nutty flavor, but they're just really, really good. And Tegan, you did a great job on this. Really tasty. This is really good. Really easy recipe. I mean, it cooks for a long time, but once it's going, it just goes on its own, so. Yeah, so we're gonna go enjoy this. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something about chestnut mushrooms. And if you wanna give this recipe a shot, please do. It's really, really good. So thanks again for watching. Thank you for making this delicious meal. Uh, Tony and Tegan from freshcap.com and we'll see you in the next video.